Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see by the title of today's video, we are talking about yet again another intercooled supercharger manifold for the one user. If you watched the last video, you would have seen us talk about the Eaton M122 supercharger that we've got here. In that video, we came to the realization that that's probably the smartest move to end up putting that supercharger on the car, as we were spending a lot of time engineering the 100 mm core intercooler manifold to fit the one user and it just seemed like there was a lot of engineering going to that that could probably have been going into fitting the big lower at that point. But with that being said, our schedule really doesn't allow us to fabricate a whole new manifold from scratch. That supercharger also needs the snout being shortened on it, so the pulley lines up with the crank. It currently has drive-by-wire throttle on it, and yeah, that's no good for the Elite 2000 ECU that I run, so we'd have to make our own adapter and mount my current throttle body elsewhere, so yeah, there's quite a bit of engineering to go into making that supercharger fit. So I came to the realization that I probably need to look at doing something else in the interim. Potentially looked at finishing off the 100mm core intercooler manifold, but once again, there's still quite a bit of fabrication to make that fit within that time frame, so it's pretty unrealistic. So with that being said, if you follow the Facebook and Instagram pages, you probably would have seen a long time ago that I talked about this transmission cooler. Um, this originally I had the idea of mounting this to the bottom of the current manifold's top plate and I did do that and I uh, basically just wasn't happy with how it turned out. Uh, that manifold's box is very limited for space on the inside and the orientation of these two inlet and outlet ports on the cooler itself didn't allow for pipe work to easily go in and out. Uh, I welded fittings to the top plate either side to pass through and had hoses linking them up and yeah, there was a couple of leaks that occurred and I fixed them, but I basically had zero confidence for this to have any reliability. Uh, last thing we wanted to do was be in the middle of a track day and then yeah, get a gut full of water go through the motor. So basically that idea was scrapped and then we moved on. But then that got me thinking, maybe we've been looking at this all wrong. Maybe this shouldn't be mounted underneath, but instead mounted on top. So it had me thinking about making a sandwich plate design to encapsulate this and mount below the supercharger but on top of the top plate for the current manifold. There's a couple of companies out there that are already making similar setups. Mace Engineering make a setup and basically uses a very similar design of cooler that's encased in a thermal composite material. Um, I think they sell for about $400 Australian. But I figured, I already own this, and I've got quite a bit of aluminium plates still laying around from other projects, so why not try and come up with something that basically just takes time, and not much of that, to come up with an idea of our own. So, with that being said, I'll show you the CAD drawings that I came up with a bit of an idea of the design. So here we have the CAD drawing for the bottom plate of the 19mm sandwich cooler. So, it's actually pretty simple in design. I've gripped some vectors here, so you can see that pink outline there, that's the external dimensions of the transmission cooler that we'll be using. So as you can see I've drawn the barbs there pointing on the right hand side and there's a bit of clearance there so our hose should be able to fit on there nicely and secure. Um, yeah there's not much else to it really other than this dotted line here is the port that will be cut out that will blow the air through the sandwich plate and out the other side. This pink dotted line here is actually the discharge port of the supercharger and it's orientated exactly where it'll be in relation to it. Uh, it's obviously a lot smaller, uh, it is what it is. Um, hopefully with having the bit of clearance between the supercharger base and where the cooler will be mounted, we might be able to utilize as much area as we can try and let that air go through and get cooled as efficiently as possible. Uh, these holes here are the pass-through holes, so being a sandwich plate design, they go straight through the other side, so our supercharger will sit on top, bolts through these holes, and it'll fix to the current top plate on the existing manifold. These holes here, these are locating holes, basically, so they'll be countersunk M8 bolts. This plate here is the bottom plate, so these will all be threaded, and then the middle plates that sit on top of these will have holes that are countersunk for the M8 bolts to locate into so it bolts together nicely. So I've done up some tool parts here to create a bit of a quick 3D model for you and that's what it's going to look like essentially. So pretty simple. Uh, we've got a 5mm recess on this just to locate that cool and nice in place and then we will show the middle and top plate and this is the vectors for here. So 
pretty simple design still. On the left there, you can see that's the middle plates and they've got the little sections cut out for the barbs to go through. And then on the right, we've got the top plate. Uh, much the same design, really. I'm sure you can figure all that out. You can see that there's more holes on the left piece than there is on the right, just because it'll have threaded holes in it and also have a countersunk section. So the top plate can bolt to the middle one and then the middle plate can bolt to the bottom. And once again, we will show you some 3D models. And there we have it. So pretty simple. It's all cut out of 12 millimeter aluminum plate. Uh, there will be an avoid of 20 millimeters where the recessed, recessed sections of it is. So uh, we've got 12 mil here, and then we'll have five and three to give us a total of 20. The cooler actually measures 19 and a half millimeters, so it'll give us about half a millimeter of clearance, which should be good. So with that being said, let's get into cutting some plates. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down All around this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found But you don't care, you're unaware Keep moving like the scars aren't even there It's in the air like a blazing flare And here we have the trial piece cut out. So this is just a bit of scrap inch nylon I had kicking around that I made this out of, but it gives you the idea of the basic design behind it. So that's the cooler there, and it's all milled away. And <laughs> cut through too far over here, but it doesn't matter because this is the mock-up piece and this is how we learn. But yeah, the concept is basically that this will be inside there, and we will seal around there and through all the here with RTV, and then there'll be a top plate that goes on top of that. Um, I did discover after I'd done this, um, with me drawing, I should have had this filled in here because it's just another void to fill for no reason. Uh, these ones here, they are open to the atmosphere obviously, but being full of RTV, then hopefully that will seal. Uh, it seems to be the way that the other companies are doing theirs, they just use RTV to seal them up and then bolt the whole thing together, so hopefully that works. Um, yeah, so pretty promising. So, with all that being cut out, we'll have a crack at cutting it out of some aluminium plate. How you close by the stormy seas? Oh, you meant the world to me. You kiss your head when you cried for me. Hold you hand while the pain was over. Keep you warm by the boring sea. You meant the world to me. And these are the plates cut out. So essentially, just a whole bunch of plates here that'll stack together and they're all countersunk and bolted together. But bottom plate, middle plate pieces, and then top plate there. So I'll go through manually and countersink the holes for them just on the pedestal drill. I probably could have done it on the CNC, but didn't have the tool there at the time. So I'll just do it uh, here. So basically, it's much similar setup as before. That sits in there. Try and do this as unequally as I possibly can. But let's stack that there. More or less. Give me a sec. Yep, 
that's how it goes together. So it looks pretty snazzy. Over here. And there we go. So it's not quite aligned because I just threw it together roughly as you saw, but that's what we'll be after. So if that was sitting on there square, that's be where our hose barb goes onto it. And then same for the other. And then all these places, plates will be glued together. So supercharger or bolt right on top of that. Bolts will pass through it, through those holes on the outside there. And then, yeah, get sandwiched on the top of the current manifold. So we'll have a go at countersinking these holes. And so here we have them all countersunk. So it worked all went to plan. Once I set the depth gauge on the first hole, they were all easy from then. So just got the camera lady to come over and hold it for me because it was a bit difficult on the first one trying to balance the camera on the board, but we got there. So now that that's done, we will have to tap the holes and we're tapping them all by hand. So try and do a bit of a time lapse of that right now. Points in blaming you, you did not know how oh. I thought you were the one for me That's why I give you everything That was you crossed by the stormy seas So you meant the world to me And there we have it, so it's all finally mocked up and assembled together uh, we obviously have to pull it apart again to reseal it, but I just wanted to make sure that everything physically bolted together in the right order and that it was going to work before we got to that step. But yeah, it looks pretty good. The only thing I can note that I stuffed up is you can see here that there's a counter sunk hole here. Um, yeah, I didn't mark that properly when I did those, so that's one of the pass through holes. I uh, shouldn't worry us at all. Um, gasket's big enough to accommodate for all of that. So yeah, with that all being done, we will disassemble and start sealing it all up. So I've decided here, you probably saw me with the red pen out before marking these little dots on here. I've decided that I'm actually going to physically bolt that transmission cooler down to it. So we'll center punch them and drill and tap them as well. start assembling so I thought I'd just run through with a bit of a quick idea of what's going on just for the time lapse so you see what's happening but the idea is that we've got some Loctite 515 flange sealant that we're going to put onto these faces as we assemble all the body of the sandwich plate. Uh, we also have some blue RTV uh, to seal this valve basically so all those little thin grooves there we're just going to pump all that with RTV, same thing, once it sits into here. The process will be to fill in all here after we start assembling it, pump down through the gaps, all through here. And then as it all bolts together, it should hopefully compress a bit. And then, yeah, let it cure for a while. And then we should have a sealed in a cooled sandwich plate. So enough of that, we'll get cracking. You never hear when I'm in pain, you hide in like shadows in the atmosphere charting the stratosphere yeah, yeah. I prayed for you and catching near and hopes you chase away my fears I'm on 
Pointing, blaming you, you did not know. Oh. I thought you were the one for me. That's why I give you everything. How'd you cross by the stormy seas? Oh, you meant the world to me. So if you made it this far through the video, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And you are rewarded with seeing one finished in a cool sandwich plate. Pretty cool. Um, I'm glad that we we're able to wrap this all up in one video. Um, Seem to be doing a lot of videos lately, talking about stuff and not actually getting it done. And we finally achieved something. Uh, there was a lot of RTV that squeezed out as this was being assembled. Um, I sat down for about half an hour off the camera, just with the rag and prep sole, just trying to get all these little bits as they were squeezing out and there was a little bit around the inside so I was trying to wipe all that out and there's a tiny little bit there at the moment but once that goes off um, it'll be easy to pick it out and blow it all with a compressor and make sure that there's no debris in there so that'll be awesome. So with this being completed the next video will be installing it on the car so I've got a header tank that needs to go on the car and then plumb the lines up and mount this below the Eaton M90 supercharger. So it's all pretty exciting. So thanks for watching everyone. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps with motivation to keep these videos coming and to be making cool projects like this. So yeah, with that being said, we'll see you next time.